everyone. Um, you might be wondering, what on earth is this monstrous machine? Uh, well, it's based on the Nissan Patrol, the Y62, the current Nissan Patrol. Um, but it's called the Infinity QX80. It was launched in Australia earlier this year, but it's actually been on sale overseas since 2010, 2011. So it's quite an old car. It used to be called the QX56 um, in relation to the 5.6 litre V8 engine under the bonnet. It still does have a 5.6 litre V8 engine, uh, uses direct injection and variable valve timing. It produces 298 kilowatts at 5,800 RPM, although it redlines at 6,200 RPM, which is quite high for a big capacity V8, and it develops 560 newton meters of torque at 4,000 RPM. There's no turbocharging or supercharging here, um, so the peak torque is available at 4,000 RPM, and then obviously it tapers off at either side. So you can see uh, elements of the Nissan Patrol in the body design, um, such as the pillars, uh, and the main slab of the torso in the middle there is quite similar. But where it does differ is around the front, um, which is, in my opinion, one of the, uh, the awkwardest looking noses on a modern production car. Although we do have to give it some leeway since it's from 2010, 2011. Um, but the way these headlights sit right down, there's a big gap at the top there, uh, makes it look like a bit of a rhinoceros in my opinion. It's a huge vehicle, even the wheels are massive. They're 22 inches and they're standard, wrapped in 275 tyres. It's got seven seats, of course, and all of the off-road credentials as the Nissan Patrol, aside from the low-profile rubber, which is probably going to be a hindrance off-road. Let's see what she sounds like. Push button start. I'm not sure how that comes through on camera, but it's actually a really nice sounding V8 engine. It's got a certain rhythm, a sort of rumble to it. Um, it reminds me of the Hemi Chrysler V8s, the 6.4 litre. I'm not going to pretend to be an engineer or anything like that, but I think it's got something to do with the, the sheer capacity, but also the firing order that keeps that sort of rhythm, that sort of harmonious thrum to it, which you don't get in some of the Ford and GM V8s. In terms of the interior, this is a high-end product. Um, Infinity is to Nissan what Lexus is to Toyota. So you get plenty of creature comforts and luxuries, leather on the dash, um, electric everything and uh, um, abundance of buttons. I'm not really a fan of this wood grain trim. It looks like it comes from a 1990s boardroom or some CEO's office in the 1990s. Um, and there's lots of chrome as well, which reminds me of an American car, which it you know sort of is. But you do get everything though. So you've got heated seats front and rear, heated steering wheel, um, electric steering column, there's even electric folding rear seats and a 15 speaker Bose stereo system with two subwoofers. It's, it's very well kitted out, but it would want to be though because the Australian retail price is just over $110,000. I'm not a huge fan of this, this whole interface. Um, modern day cars might incorporate all this into one screen. Um, I think it's always good to have the climate separate just so you can um, control it and easily, easily see what you've got it set at. But yeah, this, the, the media system and the, this menu system here is just yeah, quite cumbersome. There's plenty of room in here though. So this is competing against cars like the Toyota Land Cruiser, uh, Mercedes-Benz GL class, and even the Range Rover to some extent. So you've got huge amount of headroom and plenty of, plenty of leg room as well. The floor actually drops down uh, more so than it does in the Toyota Land Cruiser. So you've got that support for your under thighs there. Let's have a look at the back seats. So as you would expect, there's plenty of room back here. Like it's huge, there's heaps of leg room and headroom is just, just as good as well. Um, two DVD screens for the kids. They come with their own headphones as well. Then they've got their own climate settings and heated, heated seats. But yeah, I can't believe how much room there is in the back of this. 
this is one of those cars that you just want to go for a drive in and just sit in the back seat just because it's there's just so much room and you you feel like a bit of a president back here let's have a look at the third row um, to drop down the seats you can use the manual lever but there's also a button in the front that you can use just down here which is quite convenient um, but it won't put them back in place There's a bit of room here. Um, leg room is limited, of course. The, the floor doesn't drop down at all. Um, but there's actually a bit of space. There's a, quite a distance between the, um, the second row and the third row. Headroom is also pretty good. Um, my head's not touching. It's not even close, really. Um, but if you're a, a bit larger, it will become a bit restrictive. Um, you've got your own cup holders and your own air vents. These seats are electronic as well, so you've got a little button here which you can use to fold back the seats. Um, I'll just get out and show you. I'll just show you the cargo space as well. So you've got a bit of room here, even with the, the third row up, um, but then you've got these buttons here which you can use to fold down the third row. Let's take it for a drive and see how it handles. It's definitely a large vehicle um, and you get that sense when you're sitting behind the wheel here. The, the seating position is quite high and perched up, giving you a good view of the, the road ahead. The window seals are quite low as well so you can definitely peer over other traffic. I'm not sure if you can hear that very well through the um, through the GoPro, but the engine, even just when you're cruising along like this, it sounds like a nice meaty muscle car. There's a certain refinement to the soundtrack as well. It uses a 10.8 to 1 compression ratio, um, so it's quite a quite a snappy and responsive engine. So this is obviously not a sports car, but we like to take every car that we review. Um, down some sort of demanding road just to see how they they stack up against each other so we've taken a Toyota Land Cruiser down here and it um, obviously possesses quite a lot of body roll and the, the big balloony tires don't provide much response but this with the 27550 tires handles a lot better um, there's better response and there seems to be a bit less body roll the steering is also slightly more direct it's definitely a very nice um, luxury vehicle. It's very comfortable, peaceful, and that, that V8 engine is uh, provides you know a reassuring amount of torque to get you through the traffic. But for me, the best part about this vehicle is the engine. Um, paired with this seven-speed automatic, you can actually have a little bit of fun with it. So you slot it over to manual mode, um, and it'll actually blip throttles on the down changes. When you get enthusiastic like this, there is a bit of body roll, of course, um, that you do have to get used to. But that engine is just a really nice unit. Especially with this 7-speed transmission, it's very responsive. Pull it back a gear and it'll change straight away. Upshifts are a bit slower, but it is a normal torque converter automatic, so you can't expect lightning, lightning quick upshifts. Even though it's not designed for uh, sports car driving, it's it's actually a little bit of fun. Um, once you get used to the weight and pay respect to it, it's uh, it's got a lot of traction, and the steering is. 
quite precise. If only they put this engine in a nice little sports sedan. It does have twin piston front brakes, but due to the 2.8 ton curb weight, um, they are starting to overheat even as we speak now. But yeah, you can actually hit the apex and really give it some around the corners and it'll hold on. It's not as impressive as uh, the German rivals, like the BMW X5 is, is pretty much a sports car in terms of handling, apart from the weight. Um, but this deserves a lot of respect because it's got the underpinnings of a Nissan Patrol, which is you know renowned as a, as a heavy duty off-road vehicle. Um, but yeah, again, for me, the engine is, is the best part of this package um, as well as the interior space it's very comforting in here feels like you're sitting in a lounge room um, albeit from the 1990s but yeah it's very comfortable peaceful um, there's a lot of features in here too don't expect uh, ideal economy with a vehicle like this we've we're sitting on 21.7 liters per 100 kilometers and we've done around 300 kilometers um, some of that incorporated driving through roads like this but there was a lot of high highway driving incorporated in that as well we'll be putting together our usual uh, written review more in-depth written review on performancedrive.com.au soon um, that'll include our performance video as well thanks for watching